You are now listening to the Be Your Own Hashtag Love Goals podcast with Mo Ari and Tiffany. We just want you to remember that every person, regardless of identity, wants these three things, belonging, authenticity, and love. And after a decade of partnership, we've learned to co-create these things and so much more. So from wherever you're listening, we're going to go on a journey of becoming our own hashtag love goals. Now let's get into this episode. Hey, it's Mo Ari and Tiffany. And this is the Be Your Own Love Goes podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank y'all so much, Mo. Thanksgiving is almost here. Thanksgiving is here. It is here. Like, it's not almost here. It's like here, here. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be next week. I know. And it it's got me to thinking about the first time I took you home for Thanksgiving. Mm. And I was so excited. The days leading up. Even the month leading up, after we had decided that that is what our plan was going to be, I was so excited, but I was so nervous. I was probably nervous as well. Oh, my God. I was nervous for so many reasons. Like, is it going to go well? Is Mo going to have a good time? Like, all the things. And in my family, celebrating Thanksgiving for the purposes of family gathering and connection. Okay, yeah. let's be clear. That's what we're celebrating. Not Columbus. Not and Columbus. Colonization. <laughs> and the genocide of b- millions and billions exactly. of indigenous people. That's not what we celebrate. Absolutely We not. were celebrating family, togetherness, gratitude. Absolutely. And good food. So I was like, yes, Mo's going to come. It's going to be amazing. But I was so nervous thinking yeah. about how you would be received, yeah. how how we would be received as a couple. Yeah. For a lot of people, they hadn't met you mm-hmm. before that Thanksgiving. And I feel like for a lot of people, thinking about taking their partner home for the holidays is incredibly nerve wracking. Yeah. And it's nerve wracking for because for a lot of people, this is the first introduction into your family. Mm-hmm. This is the first time that you are... This could be the first time you're ever bringing someone, yeah. you know, your <laughs> first serious relationship. I think that was you. <laughs> yes, that was exactly me. So, I mean, we could talk about the reception of all of that in a whole other episode, but I kind of wanted to center around what it's like when you take your partner home, especially for the holidays. The holidays traditionally are times of joy and family and fun. But for people, especially I would say people in the LGBTQIA plus community, it can be very unsettling as to how people will respond, how you'll be received, if you'll just be tolerated, if you'll be celebrated. And so I really want to talk about, Mo, you know, what your experience has been as a therapist, as a person who is a partner of a person who took you home for Thanksgiving um, and then dive into some of the difficulty that might arise. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you so much for just talking yeah. about what it's like for anybody bringing their partner home. Mm-hmm. I'll start this episode saying we are coming to you all right now from Muskogee land in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Mm. Just honoring honoring all the ancestors who walked these grounds, Mm -hmm. these lands before Mm -hmm. uh, my ancestors were even here. Mm -hmm. Now, I've done my ancestry and I got a little something and something and everything in there. (laughs) (laughs) But I will not, uh, and and many of my ancestors were actually from this part of Georgia. Yeah. Um, Muskogee County, I think is what it was mm-hmm. at the time, like mm-hmm. much longer ago. But I think I just want to honor the ancestors mm. and give thanks for their sacrifices, yeah. the many hands that prepare soul food before I knew what soul food mm-hmm. was, the generational traditions that 
have brought us to this time of togetherness mm-hmm. as black people, black mm-hmm. queer people, uh, BIPOC people. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I really Thank appreciate you, you just that. saying that the yeah. reason why we give thanks is not because of these Mm-mm. very painful histories. No. It's because of these collective histories we yes. have of being descendants of people who made it beyond those tribulations. Mm-hmm. So it's very special when we get together. Mm-hmm. I think, I know, mm-hmm. I th- it's very special when we get together as mm-hmm. Black people, yes, as BIPOC people, mm-hmm. because we are the descendants of the people exactly. who were able to survive such harsh circumstances, Mm -hmm. such severe oppression. Mm -hmm. So every opportunity we have to give thanks to those ancestors, to give thanks and to show gratitude, we should do that. Mm -hmm. So getting together is a radical act of resistance. Oh my, yes it is. Back then it was resistance, right? To be able to still have your joy Mm -hmm. in all of that. Mm -hmm. That changes many people generation mm-hmm. after generation after generation. That's why we're here. That's why we get to celebrate. So yes. I'm excited. Thank you for starting our episode. No, I am you know. excited. Thank you for taking the time to honor the ancestors. So that is so important. You know, I hope I'm. Yeah. They're why we have these traditions, why. not Columbus. Yeah, <laughs> that's a whole other series of episodes. Yes. We won't. Oh we, my God. We're going to decolonize uh, our Thanksgiving practice, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but in in seriousness, I'm glad you just started that with that. Mm-hmm. And then I want to say, yes, I remember mm-hmm. coming home to meet your family mm-hmm. and being very, very excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, also being very nervous. Mm-hmm. And I think for any person that I've worked with over the years as a therapist, um, who has been embarking upon this rite of passage mm. of meeting the family for the first passage. time. Yes. It comes with many challenges. Mm-hmm. I think that there are many things that you don't expect to happen mm-hmm. that do happen. Mm-hmm. And I think we should talk about that. Mm. Uh, I think one of those first things that happens out of the gate that we're not expecting to happen is all of the questions that we're bombarded with from oh relatives wondering who you are, what your uh, intentions are for their child, Mm -hmm. uh, their relatives. Exactly. Where y'all meet, do y'all live together? Exactly. And it can be very invasive. It can. (laughs) It can because you want to, one, have a collaborative story on what you're going to tell people. (laughs) And so, you know, yeah, that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> and I don't think I experienced that too much yeah. in a negative sense. I remember when you came to visit my family for the first time during a holiday, mm-hmm. somebody I hadn't seen in years. Mm-hmm. And I think I've said this before. Mm-hmm. Somebody I hadn't seen in years or I didn't interact with that much yeah. was like, why you ain't introduced Tiffany to me? And I'm like, I actually have. Tiffany has been to so many things. Also, I never heard of this person before, so it didn't phase me at all. <laughs> But they felt some type yeah. of way. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that I can't keep track of who's met her mm-hmm. at this point. She's been to so many things. Mm-hmm. I think you've been to like at least six or seven very large family <laughs> gatherings. It was it was into our rela- it was years into our <laughs> relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So but that was invasive. And I was like, I was not compassionate though. Mm-hmm. My, uh, not, I wasn't mean. I just wasn't like, oh, I'm so sorry. Here's Tiffany. Mm -hmm. I was like, she's been to so many things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's, I wasn't prepared for that at Mm -hmm. that point because this wasn't the first time I was bringing you home. Right. I think the first time I probably would have been prepared for somebody to have that kind Mm -hmm. of reaction. Mm -hmm. I wasn't prepared at that moment. So it's really good in those moments to be prepared for these relatives to kind of inundate you with questions Mm -hmm. did you experience any questioning from my family not really i mean thanksgiving luckily was not the first time that i had met them i feel like holidays like thanksgiving christmas and things like that are very they can be more high stakes yeah um 
So I had met high your family. In what way? I think people are just high stakes. Like people potentially have more time. Like it's not as like you're probably off on Thanksgiving Day, so you have more time to like sit down and talk and have conversations. You could be caught up in like a two hour conversation with this cousin over here that you don't really want to have a conversation with. Thanks. Um, and then it's a lot more extended family, I feel like. Yeah. For things like Thanksgiving. And so I had met your immediate family, I would say pretty much all of your immediate family beforehand. Yeah. So it wasn't that like intensive first mm -hmm. time meeting at yeah. Thanksgiving dinner, you know? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So if you're bringing your partner home for the first time mm -hmm. and you, I encourage you to think ahead time mm -hmm. around this, this relative thing. <laughs> Tiff, I'm curious from you and you might throw this one back on me, Yeah, but I'm curious for Couples experiencing any kind of cultural differences, mm. uh, what they should probably keep in mind. Mm -hmm. So that could be spiritual, religious, cultural differences, mm -hmm. but that could also mean racial, cultural differences, yeah. any kind of cultural difference between families, mm -hmm. like what they should keep in mind when they're going home or they could prepare for yeah. when they're going home to meet their partner's family. So I think it takes a lot of intention. So on the one hand, I think it takes. If you're go so let's say you're going to your girlfriend's house for Thanksgiving, then your girlfriend needs to have a conversation with family about, you know, this is my partner. This is, you know. Talk about whatever that cultural difference might be. Yeah. So that there's some understanding. And yeah. then maybe if there's particular language that's appropriate or inappropriate, mm -hmm. let's talk about it. Absolutely. And then additionally, on the flip, I think it's important then to educate your partner that you're taking home about any cultural differences that might be present right. at your family home or at the gathering. Right. And so just having those conversations ahead of time, I think, eliminates some of the surprise. Right. Um, I think, yeah, some of these things you can't predict, but right. as much as possible, having the conversations with both parties, I think there's tools that you can have as a couple. If there's like an exit plan that you have, if something happens that's challenging, or if there's a code word y'all have, mm -hmm. if something has happened and we get, we'll get later We'll talk more about it later, what some of those things might be. But I think yeah. the intention of having the conversations with all parties involved, at least the host. Yeah. Like you're not gonna talk to everybody in your family, but as yeah. at least if it's at your parents' home, let's say yeah. you have a conversation with them. That makes sense. I mm -hmm. think if there are any kind of cultural differences, the conversation ahead of time can help you to mm -hmm. be prepared for what yes. you're going to be stepping into. I'm thinking about uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the mm -hmm. new, well, just Bel Air, the yeah. new series yeah. on Peacock. Mm -hmm. And Hillary goes home to meet uh, Jazz, Jazz. Mm -hmm. Jazz's family. Mm -hmm. And they're Muslim. Mm -hmm. And she's like, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like she's read about is this the right show yes this is the show okay because mm -hmm. I, I was thinking about that other movie that kenya barris made where it was like an interracial couple oh yes no not that, that didn't happen one. in that one no, it was similar it was similar yeah. okay okay so anyway back to, yeah mm -hmm. so back to bel-air mm -hmm. so hillary goes home to meet jazz's family jazz's family is muslim She's clearly read everything there is to know about being Muslim, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's like just dropping random knowledge. Yeah. And it was so it was, it was cringy. cringy. Yeah. That she was like, she but she was just so eager. Mm -hmm. And it came across. So her and Jazz go have a conversation mm -hmm. later. Like, you don't have to do all that to impress my yeah. family. Like, right. It's not necessary. Mm -hmm. And you know, she's just like, I want them to like me. But it made me think of that. Mm -hmm. uh, the ways in which we could prep our partners better yeah. for 
them stepping into a cultural experience that's different from them. Mm -hmm. Teach them the customs, teach them what to expect so that they know what is happening. In certain cultures, you might walk into a room and somebody hands you a bowl or puts a bowl in your direction with hot water in it. Mm -hmm. You may or may not know what to do with that bowl. You need somebody to teach you uh, what to do with that. Mm -hmm. Or you might be walk into a situation where it's customary, let's say, to take off your shoes. Yes, that's a big one. That's a big one. Mm-hmm. And so you might, your partner might need to tell you ahead of time, well, bring some socks with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just think of the ways in which you can prep your partner ahead mm-hmm. of time for mm-hmm. those cultural differences. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes that's just the cultural differences being in the North versus being in the South. Oh my God. (laughs) Seriously. It's so many different things. Like it's not just like, it's from one household to the next. Like if there are things, um, I was going to say family traditions is another one of those things. Like if there are particular things that are essential to the Brown family that I might not know about, it's really important to say, Hey, this is the thing we do. Like, Every Thanksgiving after dinner, we do eggs. Yeah. You know, I think traditionally I've seen families, at least in the media, they'll play flag football I after Thanksgiving do that. dinner. <laughs> you think now, Jojo I, and Brandon to play with me? They might. You should text them. I'm going to try not to break none. They in their 20s. Yeah. I'm 30. <laughs> so for a lot of families, that could be the tradition, right? Yeah. And so, I mean, as your partner, you might want to be prepared. You might want to yeah. say like, "Ooh, I'm going to bring me some basketball shorts on the side, like something yeah. so that you know yeah. um, that that's going to happen. Yeah. That's not as. And if your family gets really competitive, yeah, you need to tell you your need partner to tell that them. ahead of time. They, so they kind can. of sore losers. So like, you know. just prep them. Yeah. <laughs> they might be like real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you might want to, or they might. Yeah. You you might want to be working out up into that mm-hmm. because if you lo- if you cause them to lose, they might be not letting you exactly. go. Exactly. Right? Like, we need to know if your family's competitive. Yes. We need to know that. So we can choose with, with that kind of informed nature mm-hmm. whether or not we're going to play mm-hmm. the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. That's hilarious. Yeah. So, I mean, we talked about these, like, overbearing relatives, these invasive questions. Judgmental questions and comments. Absolutely. Uh, we talked about some of these family traditions yeah. that you want to be aware of. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking, like, you. what was it like for you stepping into my family environment for the first time when it being so large oh my that was an adjustment because I am my grandmother is the only child and so oftentimes my maternal grandmother so oftentimes when we had gatherings it was her and her children and their their families and so that's it was always around the 16 15 Mm. range and so Mm. going to your Family and it being, I am the youngest of six siblings, so that right. means I there were eight people in my family. That's half, That's half of your gathering. That's half. And That's so half to experience, not to mention, we invite every coworker, every friend. On top of the fact that my mom is like one of eleven siblings, and then my dad has siblings, and they all got kids, and we got nieces yes. and nephews, like. You saying half of your family yes. gathering, right? That's what we were. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. So it was intense, but I enjoyed it. Like yeah. I had never experienced that amount of people together, but I love just being around a lot of people. I yeah. like I'm low key an extrovert, so yeah. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't overwhelming for me, but I can imagine for somebody who does not have the same receptivity that I have that they would be like, wait, what's going on? It could be it could very be unsettling. <laughs> yeah. It could be a lot. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
So definitely, again, prepare your partner. Yeah. We have a large family. This is going to be a large gathering. Yeah. It's going to go on for this long. People yeah. linger. Like, let them know the deets. Yeah, okay? we're probably not going to leave until everybody else leaves. Yeah. Let, like, really talk it through. Really You're talk. Right. Like, give You're them, right. let them know. Like, even if, let's say you come from a family that doesn't drink. Mm-hmm. Or it's particular things that they engage in or don't. I mean, this speaks more to again to the family tradition. Let your partner know. Yeah. I feel like for me, it would be very frustrating if I enacted a thing that could potentially be harmful or offensive or right that I just didn't because I didn't right. know. Right. You know. Right. Right. <sighs> yeah, I've yeah. seen people show up. With as a partner meeting the family for the first time, real sexy. Yeah, <laughs> and people have stuff to say about that. Now me, I'm like, do you? Yeah. Be your own fashion goes, mm-hmm. but like, I think for the older generation, they were perceiving that in mm-hmm. a different way. Mm-hmm. So it's like you want to tell your partner this will go over well with these people, not really with these people. Exactly. You're making a first impression. Mm-hmm. It, you don't have to dress like you mm-hmm. going to a job interview, but yeah. like, just give them a little heads up. If you know some people are more conservative and things yeah. like that, because I'm, you're yeah, right. I feel like that's the, the general consensus of all of this is give them a heads up if you know about it. Like yeah. if it's somebody who politically you just kind of really disagree with, keep them from having conversations. Yes, like that. just please. Like if you knew they voted for. Mm-hmm. He should. He who shall not be named. He is not Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> then you should probably say, "Uh, don't engage in a conversation about this with them." Not in a um, black family gathering, but okay. Oh my god! But like, even if it's a person that's traditionally like argumentative or messy, like but you, you know, know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I do have a black uncle who did this would have actually been a scenario, but we don't <laughs> talk like that. I have a black aunt that Okay, but sh- okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Moving on. Um mm-hmm. yes. So misunderstandings can arise again with like the invasive questions. People mm-hmm. can just lack a lot of privacy. Mm-hmm. Like whether you're, you know, this is your first time bringing your partner home or it's like a person you've been with for a really long time. Mm-hmm. Like they can ask all types of questions that you may not want to answer. When y'all yeah. get married, yeah. when y'all having a baby, like, yeah, I'd rather yeah. not. And I think for LGBTQ plus people, I'm thinking even like the privacy to yeah. have like intimate space where yeah. you feel comfortable. That's true. It's like if you're meeting their family for the first time and you don't know how they're feeling about mm-hmm. you while being queer, let's say, because some families mm-hmm. are super accepting and celebratory, mm-hmm. so they make it easy for you to be yourself. But in certain spaces where you're feeling like, mm, I could just be being tolerated, mm-hmm. you don't know if it's okay to hold your partner's hand. Mm-hmm. You don't know if it's okay to like have your partner sitting in, in your lap. Mm-hmm. or So I mm-hmm. think... You could go the right. I mean, I think I definitely intentionally, even that first Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. was like, Tiffany, come sit in my lap. Yeah, you like, were. Like, I was like, I just want, we have to create belonging. Mm-hmm. You can't request you can't it. You can't wait for it. You can't wait for mm-hmm. it. But I do think sometimes that lack of privacy can be a hurdle if mm-hmm. you're not as like audacious as I am yeah. to say, come sit in my lap. Mm-hmm. We can just go make this okay, mm-hmm. right? Because for many people, they don't want to step out of line. Yeah. Now, I think at that point, for a number of other reasons, the first Thanksgiving I went home with you for, I think was after we were married. Yes. We that were pregnant was, as well. We were pregnant as well. Mm-hmm. So at that point, I'm like, I, I put a baby in there. Mm-hmm. You sitting in my lap, mm-hmm. right? But no one knew we were pregnant. But yeah, I think my parents knew. <laughs> but that was about it. Yeah. But so for I think, um, so I think in that instance, though, it's important to really talk about. Uh, mm-hmm that where we're going to create intentional yeah. moments for connection, yeah. physical touch, other things, because mm-hmm. without that privacy, it can feel kind of yeah. disorienting too. You can feel more connect, disconnected yeah. from your partner. And I think as another, a new person coming into those situations, you can often feel left out. Yeah. And I certainly feel like that. Like when mm-hmm. I'm first meeting people, 
when I was first meeting people with Tiffany, she would she's a talker, like she's just a networker. <laughs> she socializes. Hello. Yeah, you walk around the entire room talking to I everybody. Do. So sometimes it feels like I'm getting left. I'm getting left. Well, like these days you leave me. And that's these days. But like the first <laughs> time I'm like, Tiffany. I know. I know. I just be in the zone. Yeah. I'm like, stop leaving me. Mm-hmm. I don't know anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These are all things to pay attention to. I think when we're going back into our own family dynamics and family patterns, we kind of resume in the ways that we've always operated with them. And so when we bring our partners home, it's really important to be mindful and aware that this is a new person, this is a new space for them, and that we have to be cognizant of it. Because for me, I'm just like, I'm home, I'm talking to auntie, cousin, this, and then my partner over here who barely knows anyone is like, um, twiddles thumbs, you know? Twiddles (laughs) thumbs. Twiddles thumbs. The last thing I'm going to add to that list mm-hmm. that of things that could come up mm-hmm. that we might not be expecting mm-hmm. when we bring our partner home for mm-hmm. holidays is those sleeping arrangements. Oh, my. Now, my mom used to be like this. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but she's not... Up, I, I don't know if she would be doing this anymore. Most of us are uh, married. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she used to be like, if you're not married, you can't be in the same room. My grandma and my mom do the same thing. That's funny. They like, if you're not married, you're not going to sleep. You be in separate rooms. So you have to be prepared for that when you come home for the holidays, because sometimes that can be offensive to the couple. You want to just talk through those things ahead of time. And have a plan. That might mean you're not staying with your mama. Right. (laughs) Right. Right. And then you need to just talk to mom about that. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because if you get to that situation that in that moment, it can really impact the relationship mm-hmm. that your partner is trying to build with your parent right. and then that your parent is trying to build with your partner. Mm-hmm. They could end up being at odds without even having a foundation to, right. to make sense of that. Right. And that's early stuff can really mm. impact their connection. Oh and it's God. a headache for you as the partner. So you yes. want to do the best you can to build a solid foundation for them and facilitate them getting to know each other well. Mm-hmm. So if that means not sleeping at your parents' house during those first coming home for the holidays together, it's probably a good mm-hmm. idea. Mm-hmm. And then these are, these are y'all first holidays spending together. Mm-hmm. You want that privacy mm-hmm. too. So like really think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Not the privacy. I'm going to right. on a little separate living situation mm-hmm. for that so I can mm-hmm. have a little holiday fun. You little know, turkey sex. What? <laughs> What's turkey sex? <laughs> have y'all was, ever heard of turkey sex? Oh my sex? God. I was trying to see if you were listening. Gobble, gobble, ha, ha, ha. Oh, gobble, gobble. I thought the word was glock, glock. You just changed. It. Have y'all oh ever God. heard of I'm gobble, done. gobble? I'm done. I just made it up. I don't know whether to be excited or scared. If somebody gobbled me, hmm? I was about to say gobble on it. No, it's wobble, it's wobble. on it. <laughs> You're ridiculous. Gobble up. Gobble, gobble You are up. so ridiculous. Gobble on it. Gobble, Stop. gobble. <laughs> you should not be laughing that much at that. <laughs> so it's not. <laughs> gobble on it. No. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of catchy. I'm it's gonna be singing ca- that. Y'all gonna be singing that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, this is we're very ridiculous for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like safe to say there's a lot of different things that can come up. Yeah, with absolutely. When you're bringing your partner home, and just so many things, I feel like one of the best ways to approach all of this is communication, mm-hmm. particularly particularly ahead of time so yeah sometimes it might be things that happen in the moment and those com- that communication can be helpful too but if it's things that you can think of and that you're aware of that might be happening or patterns that are you know are not changing please just mm-hmm. give your partner the heads up i think nobody wants their partner to feel uncomfortable and nope i personally don't want to feel uncomfortable if i'm the person taking my partner home mm-hmm and then your family also doesn't want to feel uncomfortable. So they don't yeah. want to, I I would like to think they don't want to offend yeah. 
your guest that's coming, you yeah, know? Absolutely. I think as the partner who's bringing your partner home for the holidays, mm-hmm. it's important that you facilitate yes. their connection, their meeting. It's your so responsibility. I agree with you, mm-hmm. So I got this truth or truth question for you to wrap Ooh. up this episode around gobble Thanksgiving. On gobble, gobble on it. I will be getting some gobble gobble during the Thanksgiving holiday. Well, you holiday. said you didn't know what that was. <laughs> I just learned, and I'm a <laughs> I'm a quick study. All right. <laughs> as long as you, my mom I'm just told me today I'm she about to start uh, listening to these episodes. So I'm gonna need to stop you right yeah, you there. You should stop because <laughs> I was about to say something that was not PG. What were you about to say? I was gonna say as long as you mix in the mac and cheese on the side. I literally cannot now. You. Y'all know Please. that sound when you mix mac and cheese. It's like the sound of chicken salad. Oh my god, that is so right. Okay, let me stop. We don't need to ask. Okay, go <laughs> go to the trailer. Next thing you gonna know, we gonna have requests for an OnlyFans page. Just, oh no! <laughs> just can y'all do that, that sound. chicken salad sound? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm done. Stop giving that away for free, babe. Mm-mm, right. <laughs> I can get paid big bucks. You really could. Don't be in her DMs now, y'all. All right. At Tiffany the Empress on oh, Instagram. Let me I stop. Okay, cannot. go ahead. <laughs> it's Thanksgiving. Is it? it is Thanksgiving dinner. Mm-hmm. And you have to bring your best dish. Okay, let me get let me really prepare for this question. Mm. All right, Tiff. It's Thanksgiving dinner, mm-hmm. and you have to bring your best dish to impress all the black grandmas. What are you making? Hmm. Mm. Now, you got to impress all of them. So, first of all, I'm not bringing something that they make Why? very well. No, you have to impress them. I'm not bringing something that they make very well personally because nobody can make it like they can. I think they're going to be disappointed with that response. My first thought was to say peach cobbler. I probably always say peach cobbler, but I really do think I make a really great you peach cobbler. You make an cobbler. amazing peach cobbler. And that's one of the ones that is overlooked but when you make it, it's gone in like five minutes. Yeah, like I think I'm a. I was gonna say the peach cobbler, and I was. <laughs> this is the other thing, but people are probably gonna be like, "Girl, what? Yeast rolls." Mm. I feel like there's an art to making not just the dinner rolls you buy from the grocery store and you take them out the pack, like the ones that you add the yeast. It has to rise, like the banquet rolls that you want to buy from the banquet hall because they're so good. Don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Amount to my homemade oh my yeast God. rolls to some banquet rolls. You never had these banquet rolls in Chicago. They don't compare to my rolls. Oh I'm not really into rolls like that. You had me a peach cobbler. I, I'm choosing the peach cobbler. I'm not making no turkey. I'm not making no giblet gravy. I'm not making no collard greens. I'm not doing any of that stuff that I just... I know my ministry. But see, I feel like the grandmas would want you to make those things so that they could feel like they've passed on their torch to the next generation. So they feel like they've done their work. So they're not looking at your recipe and being like, oh, it's not as good as mine. They're like, I've done my work. So it would actually be an honor to them to really pay tribute to the recipe and do it well. The peach cobbler recipe is hers. And I do it well. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's a good answer. It's a good answer. It's a good answer. (laughs) We also got the generation in between grandmas, you know, like we got my mama, like who holds it down for some of the things my grandma used to make. Yeah. You know? So you just feel like you don't need to be doing it. Not at this point. Now there will come a day that I will have to step up to the plate. You have to step up now. You are already a matriarch. You have a child. (sighs) I guess I'll make the cranberry sauce then. (sighs) <laughs> okay, I'm done with Tiffany. I'm done. What you bringing? My plate and my fork? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I probably showed up with the alcohol. And, yeah. um, even though I don't be drinking like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's a valuable contribution. It is. Libations. 
I'm probably making a mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. Like that's my mom's like specialty. Mm-hmm. I hands down to bake mac and cheese. And you've got her approval. She's like, you could make mm-hmm. it for me. I made some really bomb collard greens one time. Mm-hmm. I still haven't got my pan back. I mean, my pot back with the rose gold handles on it. She's never keeping that forever. Used. Okay, it was a brand new it pot. It was a brand new pot. She is never giving that book back. She's oh my like, that's gosh. my uh, green spot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's but a really the greens, good answer. I love collard greens. Mm-hmm. I can season up some collard greens. So collard greens, the baked mac and cheese. I've got my mom's stamp. You made no collard greens of, for me in a long time. I have not. I've got my mom's stamp of approval on both of those things, though. To the point yeah. where she was like, "What's what season you put in there? They were so good." Well, you did that. I did that. So I'm gonna say that. But you know, I gotta have the sweet potatoes. I gotta, you know, you're gonna have to come with some more than the peach cobbler. I can make a lot of things, but if it's grandma's that's judging it, like on Thanksgiving and it's thing. Day, yeah, you gotta stick to what you know. Oh my gosh, like I'll experiment at Sunday dinner or something, but Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. it's showtime. It's, it's time. showtime. We don't have no time no for forever. No, none. Bet. Bet. Thanksgiving is such a beautiful gathering of family and yeah. community. And we've, I, we, I feel like we should find a way to honor our ancestors on that day. Now that you said that. We're going to find a way to incorporate this into our tradition with our yes. family. Next week, we're Next going week. to, they don't even know. We are definitely going to, we need to honor figure those out ancestors what, um, and give thanks for yeah. their sacrifices and the the ways in which they have paved the way for the abundance we are enjoying mm-hmm. in this time. Because it really is a beautiful time. And I think, you know, we all can practice gratitude like more, mm-hmm. like daily, more regularly. And mm-hmm. particularly during Thanksgiving time, we are all kind of forced to think about all of the things that we're grateful for Mm -hmm. or the things that we give thanks for. And so I just love that time so much. And I'm grateful to have had you come to that Thanksgiving. I feel like we've worked through a lot since that first Thanksgiving. And we're at this point where I'm following you around the room or they're like, (laughs) when is Mo Mo coming? Do he want jello shots? Do he want eggs? I'm like, I'm here. That's so funny that people think I'm fun like that. I am. Oh my god! Why is he the facilitator (laughs) of fun at Thanksgiving this year? My mom personally put him in charge. It's the big Leo energy. I'm gonna let you have that one. I'm gonna let you have that one. (laughs) Anyway, my mouth is watering. I am very, very excited. Yeah, I'm ready to eat. I can smell the food. I need to think about what outfit I'm going to wear down to the living room. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. got to get fancy for the living room. Yeah, we might have um, this one. You know, we might. Know. It's kind of cute. Nova has something to match this. It's anyway, y'all, we just. This has been a beautiful episode. Mm-hmm. We are thankful for all of you all. Thank you. For, I am thankful for you, Tiffany. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for Nova. So grateful. You all are some of my greatest teachers and two of the greatest blessings in my entire life. Uh, So I am just filled with abundance that you all are with me every day at at my side, living life with me, helping me to grow, helping me to be a better Mo. Mm. So I'm in the episode on that note. You don't have to. Wow, I'm going to sit in the gratitude of that. Yeah, just receive. You're on the receiving end right now. I receive. I receive. All right. Well, this has been a beautiful episode of the Be Your Own Love Goes podcast with Mo Ari. And Tiffany. Have a great day and be well. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Video episodes are on YouTube and Spotify. If you want your question included in an upcoming episode, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram at Be Your Own Love Goals or check out our website at lovegoespodcast.com. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye.